Hey, what's going on everyone? Greg here and iOS 14 is here. The beta version is loaded up onto my iPhone and I want to talk about some of my favorite features that I've discovered since using it. So let's go over my top 10 features for the iOS 14 beta. The first one is widgets. For the first time ever, Apple is changing up the home screen from just a row of icons and introducing widgets. Yeah, yeah, for all you Android people watching, we know you've had this feature for years, but that really doesn't matter. Now widgets can be added by long pressing on the home screen and by hitting the plus button in the top left corner. From there you can see the widgets gallery with a list of all available widgets. Alternatively, you can also swipe to the left from the home screen to activate the old widgets area. And you can add those to the home screen by simply dragging them and dropping them. Widgets can be added in three different sizes, for a smaller square that takes up four icons, a longer medium widget that takes up two rows of icons, and a large widget that can take up to four rows of icons. Widgets can be placed anywhere on the home screen and automatically arranges the icon based on where you place them. If you tap a widget, it brings you right into the application, or if you tap a specific section of that widget, it brings you right into that specific song, podcast, note, or reminder. Widgets can also be added into stacks by dragging and dropping one widget on top of another one. Widget stacks can be made up to 10 different widgets at once and you can simply scroll through them. Furthermore, there's also what Apple calls a smart stack widget that automatically puts together a list of widgets and claims to surface the right widget and information at the right time. Right now, because it's a beta, it seems that Apple is the only one that has widgets for their apps running, but Apple is also letting third-party developers make widgets through a developer API. So by the time this launches in the fall, we should have a bunch of different widgets to customize our home screen with. Like I said at the start, this is a pretty big change for the iOS home screen, which from the start was just a row of icons. So far, I like the widgets and think they look visually appealing. However, right now they largely just seem to display information and lack helpful quick controls like play and pause. Now that wasn't the only big change to the home screen with iOS 14. Apple is also adding what they are calling App Library, which is a similar concept to the app drawer that you could find on Android. The App Library is a space at the end of the home screen that you get to by swiping to the right. In that App Library, iOS 14 automatically organizes all of your apps. The first category is suggestions, based on what app you are likely to be looking for based on time, location, or activity. Other categories include things like social, productivity, creativity, entertainment, utilities, and more. Swiping down or tapping the search field also shows every single one of your installed apps in an alphabetical list view order. And you can also search like usual to find and launch applications. Furthermore, if you go into settings and then into home screen, you can choose to automatically send new downloaded apps straight to the app library only. That way you can be more selective about the icons you choose to put on your home screen. You can also take existing apps on the home screen and drag them over to the app library and they will be taken off your home screen and automatically categorized. Another new feature that goes along with this is the ability to hide your home screen pages. To do this, simply long press the home screen and then tap on the home screen pages icon just above your iOS dock. By doing this, you are taken into a view of all of your pages of apps on iOS 14. From here, you can choose which pages to hide and which pages to show. Then you can choose to hide these pages on and you can toggle them on and off at any time. Now the reason this is being implemented is so you can easily reduce the clutter on your iOS 14 pages so you can more quickly get to the app library. And overall, the addition of widgets, app library, and hiding pages is the biggest addition to the iOS home screen in, well, forever. This will probably change the way you use and interact with your phone as those outwardly designed changes are the most prominent to the user's own eyes. Another feature that I really like that Apple was adding with iOS 14, again, Android has had this for quite a while, is picture-in-picture -picture support. Now, to be fair to Apple, their other operating systems like iPadOS and macOS have also had this for a couple of years now. The picture-in-picture -picture mode works very similar to how it does on the iPad, and if you're watching a video that supports picture-in-picture, -picture, all you have to do on your phone is swipe up and the video automatically enters picture-in-picture -picture mode. Alternatively, there's an icon on the top that you can also press to enter the picture-in-picture -picture mode. In this picture-in-picture -picture mode, you can now continue watching your video in a small floating window as you go back to the home screen or use other apps. You can move this floating video player around to each of the four corners of the display, as well as pinch to zoom to make the picture-in-picture -picture window bigger or smaller. There's also quick controls on the picture-in-picture -picture video player, so you can play and pause, skip forward or back by 15 seconds, tap the top right to re-enter full screen, or tap the X in the top left to exit out of picture-in-picture. -picture. 
Furthermore, picture-in-picture -picture also works when you're taking a FaceTime video call, much like it does on the iPad. Now, here's actually an iOS 14 feature that actually wasn't mentioned on stage, and it's actually a little bit hidden in the accessibility menu. This is called the back tap setting. To enable this, go to settings, accessibility, touch, scroll down to the bottom, and enable back tap. Now you have two options, a double tap or a triple tap, and you can enable both of them at the same time. Now there's a list of pre-selected actions you can choose from, like Notification Center, Control Center, Siri, Spotlight, and much more. Right now I have Double Tap Map to Notification Center and Triple Tap Map to Control Center. Now all I have to do is double tap the back of my iPhone and without doing anything else my Notification Center drops down. Same for Triple Tap as well, which brings down and activates the Control Center. All of this works flawlessly, and it's nice to have on the bigger iPhones, as it can be a little bit difficult to activate Notification and Control Center when you're using the phone one-handed. And while this isn't there yet as an option, I hope Apple adds even more options like launching the camera with this double tap method. Another feature I really like is that phone calls now come in via a notification banner rather than taking up the entirety of your display. Phones have become pocket computers more than they have phones, and it was always annoying to be in the middle of doing something and receiving a call that took up the entirety of your display. Now when you get an incoming phone call, you can swipe up on the banner to dismiss the call or swipe down to access extended phone features and tap to answer. If you hate this change, don't worry, you can go into settings and enable calls to come in through the full screen again. This new compact UI has also been implemented into Siri. Now when you activate Siri, you get a much smaller Siri icon on the bottom of the display. When you ask Siri a question, it now displays that information in a banner on the top of your display, so you can still focus on the content that's right in front of you. Now, while I like that Siri doesn't take up the entire iPhone's display anymore, I don't like that it still basically freezes your iPhone so you can't continue to use your iPhone to ask Siri questions while you're interacting with the device. I would love to have a more seamless experience where I can activate Siri and still be able to use my phone either by scrolling, typing, or swiping. Another feature that really stuck out to me was Apple's commitment to not only making your device more private, but educating you on just how much tracking is going on with their smartphones. One way they're doing this is through a privacy report card on Safari. Now by clicking on the top left and accessing the tracking report, you can see just how many website trackers that the Safari browser is blocking. Furthermore, Apple plans to roll out privacy information to the App Store as well, so you can see all the ways an app plans to use your data. One of the biggest reasons why our privacy is violated is because we simply don't understand how much information we're giving up. By educating consumers, they might choose not to use certain apps, which in turn might have those developers rethinking just how much information they really need to collect from you. Another new change to iOS 14 comes in the way of the Translate app, and I really like how Apple is doing this. The app in practice is actually pretty simple. It translates what you speak into another language, and then the app will use the speakers to translate what you just said to the person you're speaking to. It's super easy to follow along, and if you rotate it into landscape mode, you can even have a conversation between two different people. The cool thing is the microphone automatically detects which language is being spoken and then translates it accordingly. There's even a few settings here to make sure that the translation is really attention grabbing and big so you can easily show it to someone else. Now obviously there's been all sorts of translation apps for years. One of my favorite ones is Google Translate where you can actually like take a picture of something and then translate the text. But it's cool to see that Apple is just offering a native solution and just trying to make it as easy as possible to follow along. Now one of the last features I really liked with iOS 14, and this might be kind of cheating a little bit because it's technically not an exclusive iOS 14 feature, has to do with the update updates that they made to the AirPods Pro. Now with all of the new software updates to iOS 14, iPadOS 14, macOS Big Sur, and watchOS 7, you can automatically switch AirPods between those devices. So say if you're listening to music on your iPhone and then you stop listening to music there and you go over to your Mac, then all of a sudden you start playing something on your Mac and the AirPods will automatically connect to the Mac. This is a really seamless experience, and I really like the way that Apple is doing this. This just means that you don't have to go into the settings anymore and tap on AirPods. It works right now in the beta, although it is a little bit buggy. Sometimes I can get it to activate, and other times it doesn't activate. Also, while we're on the topic of AirPods Pro, Apple is also adding in a new spatial audio system to AirPods Pro. So improving the sound and improving the sound direction and even enabling things like Dolby Atmos. So that is really cool that they were actually able to add that via software. 
All right, and that was just a quick look at the iOS 14 beta and the features that really stuck out to me. If you like this video, make sure you give me a like. If you wanna see more from my channel, including more beta content, make sure you're subscribed. Also be sure to let me know what your favorite feature was in the comments below. If you wanna help the channel out in any way, make sure you check out some of the links in the description. And as always, thank you so much for watching and I will see you all in the next video. Take care, everyone.